That debromance at the helm of government or Jubilee administration has changed is no longer in doubt. The day's open defiance and apparent divisions over President Kenyatta's succession is equally manifest. But one man whose silence has raised eyebrows in the face of all this is Majority Leader Adan Duale. Tonight we talk to the Garissa Town Member of Parliament, text us on double two four double two. use the hashtag Newsnight on Twitter before I engage him, I'll lead a few more tweets. We have them. Right. Okay, we have uh, Kenyan boy. After staying away from the limelight, Honorable Duale makes a comeback on Newsnight with, the, with me, okay, at a time when Jubilee faces turbulence, okay? Staying away from the limelight, you can hear that. Uh, Peter Otieno, finally, Honorable Adam Duale is back, ready to listen to him. Okay, and you had more just before we went to the break. Thank <coughs> you so much for making time for us. Thank tonight. you, Sen. It doesn't look, it looks like, seemingly, it's not me only. Uh, who thinks you've been away for a while and a lot has happened of course in politics since December 2018 until now many have been wondering just like you've seen from the feedback where have you been oh I have been around um, uh, Christmas New Year I spent in the holy cities of Mecca and Medina with my sons mm -hmm. and uh, this is the <laughs> longest uh, vacation when Parliament recess right. so I went back to Garissa uh -huh. to look at uh, my camels uh, at the outskirts of Garissa my cows, had time for my mom and my friends and uh, my family. So I've been around. Which is amazing. Uh, not all politicians, I mean, as a politician, you don't get time to do uh, all that that you've said. Still, however, you're the majority leader of the Jubilee Party. You have a history. People know you. You defend the Jubilee Party in and out of parliament. You talk when issues arise. A lot has happened. You've been quiet. That is my question. Where have you been politically? No, I have not been quiet. You know, uh, I am not like, I'm not an ordinary member of parliament. <laughs> I am, uh, I occupy a very strategic position, position right? in the party. And uh, it has been my uh, way of doing things that uh, when I speak, uh, it's the position of the president and it's the position of the deputy president. So, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say is that every time I speak in the last uh, three, four years, mm -hmm. uh, the statement that I'm going to make must be a statement that uh, okay. has the concurrence of the leadership. So you don't expect me to uh, go out uh, to fin roles and political parties. I'm supposed to be the, the unifying uh, factor, factor uh, of the party in parliament and outside parliament. Did you feel the need to talk? Any time since December to now? I think, uh, of course... And uh, get their consent? Of course, uh, yes. Behind the scene, uh, I have talked to the, our party leaders, the party leader, the deputy, a number of times when I felt uh, things were going out of hand, when uh, parties, our party members were going overboard, despite our party allowing them to exercise their divergent views. There are times when uh, our rank and file members and our officials mm. Uh, when they go overboard, then uh, we need to uh, talk. And I think when Honorable Moses Kuria uh, uh, said something on first of uh, 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 first of uh, New Year, mm -hmm. the first of uh, of the yeah. midnight, yeah. and uh, when Honorable uh, David Murathe said uh, unpalatable words again as the Deputy President, mm -hmm. we had to act. We had to come back. I and, didn't see you talking. I, I think I spoke, I spoke. I mean, you, you, say, you told me um, for you to talk, you need the consent of both the president and the deputy. Didn't you talk because you couldn't get their consent? Absolutely. Or uh, what happened? No, 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 absolutely. And uh, that's why uh, uh, when we felt that uh, Honorable David Murave, uh, his personal opinion was not in tandem with what our party stands for, uh, he, had to, he had to leave. And of course, uh, when Honorable uh, Moses Kuria uh, went overboard, and uh, made uh, certain statements mm. on the party leader and the president. Uh, I spoke in Garissa and I think uh, majority of our members and both in private and in public, uh, we said that is not the position of the party. He has, uh, you've just said after David Murade spoke this was, we can play that just for the record for people yes. to remember, uh, but you said he had to leave. You know, Murade yes. said he, he resigned. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming it was voluntary. What you're trying, uh, telling me is not voluntary. He had to leave. No, no, no. Murade had to leave. I mean... Uh, so he was forced out. 
Uh, yes, uh, Murade, uh, what he did in both occasions, when he was in Vihiga and when he was in CIA, uh, uh, were not in tandem uh, with our party uh, constitution, mm -hmm. the respect for party leaders. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I am sure, uh, the party leader must have, uh, because we raise our concerns with the party leader, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure the party leader and uh, uh, my bosses must have uh, said, uh, no, I think enough is enough. Because Jubilee, you, you know the history of Jubilee as a party. Jubilee was uh, the amalgamation of about 14 uh, parties, parties, which had uh, you know, ethnic uh, connotations, which had regional blocks. Uh, so Jubilee was formed to create a national uh, party. And that's why today we are proud to have 172 members of parliament mm -hmm. from every region of our country from every county, from every community, and from every religion. Okay. So we must at all times aspire to abide by what uh, the principle that our party stands for. Who forced Murade out then? Of course, uh, the party leadership. That is President Kenyatta. The party leadership. We have a party structure. Right, the party we leader is President Kenyatta, the deputy leader is... No, no, Yamito. we have the president with the party leader, we right. have the deputy with the, uh, who is the leader. I am the leader of majority, I am part of the NEC. So the party leadership uh, set and felt that uh, uh, the utterances of uh, Honorable David Murade were not in tandem with what our party stands for. So I'm assuming that you're saying it is the president, the deputy president, and you included? That made the decision. The party leadership. <laughs> we have a structure. You know, we are not, okay. uh, we are not uh, uh, Mama Mboga or, or we have a serious party. Both the party leadership uh, is not amorphous. It is made of, up of people and people who hold positions. So when I say the party leadership, right. uh, if you go to the, uh, the constitution of yeah. the structure of our party, okay. we have the party leader, we have the deputy party leader, we have uh, the secretary <laughs> general, we have the chair, we have the neck. So that decision was reached by the party leadership. What exactly did, did you think that he said that was very wrong? I remember he talked about the deputy president being corrupt and not worthy uh, of <coughs> candidacy for the presidency. Uh, he said he'd actually begin an operation to stop Ruto from uh, vying for presidency, go as far as the Supreme Court to ensure that deputy president William Ruto uh, does not vie. So why exactly? Is it because he said the deputy president cannot vie? No, no. Is it because you say uh, the deputy president will not get an automatic ticket for 2022, or what exactly? No, no, no. In fact, uh, uh, anybody uh, can say anything about the deputy president. But uh, Honorable Murathe was not anybody. He was the vice chair of the party. And uh, there is a code of conduct and ethics that binds the leadership the top leadership of our party. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that we discuss in our party uh, when we have our boardroom meetings. So when a vice chair of our party makes a certain comments about the deputy party leader, then that uh, uh, party official that is out of order. So any other person, any other Jubilee member in the streets can say, what can say whatever. But I think uh, being a vice chair of the party, uh, there are certain uh, standards, there are certain code of ethics, and there is a respect for our party leadership, particularly uh, our president, who is the party leader, and the, uh, the deputy party leader. And that is why he had to leave. Yes, I mean, okay. you know, the, 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 the office of the deputy president, as uh, provided for in Article 147 of the Constitution, is an institution. So uh, I think uh, we felt that uh, an ordinary person can write that every day there are bloggers who write about the deputy president, newspaper headlines, you guys in the media. We have no problem with that. But, not the but I think uh, uh, a party chair. leadership, I think, no. Okay, that, that so is, that's overstepping. Now Only. that you say that, and that is why he had to leave, what do you say about the party secretary general, Rafael Tuju? In Rarieda, a feeling of um, Murade, Rafael Tuju <coughs> said, First, he told Citizen TV, I think before or after that, that there's no automatic ticket for two Absolutely, that's, that's fine. Yes. Uh, but he also, he also said, he cannot think as far as next week. He doesn't understand how people think as far as 2022. No, but you and know, there are people in Jubilee uh, who, also, who have actually called for Tuju to also resign. I think uh, uh, all those people, including uh, what Tuju has said, they're exercising their opinion as provided for in our party. 
What to, Jesus, what, what, to you say, yeah. what to you say in a private function, in mm. fact, at the burial of his brother, yes. he said, uh, how does somebody think uh, about tomorrow? That is in about 2022. No, no, he said about tomorrow. About 2022. So that okay. is, uh, uh, he spoke in his capacity, so it's about him. Honorable Duale can say, I, I'm, I mean, I'm going to plan uh, what's going to happen, even in my constituency, the next five years to come. The context was the deputy president, and he made reference to 2022. I think, uh, uh, unlike Murathe, he did not specifically made reference to the deputy president. And I, I think, okay. if it is, it's within his right to say that I am not going to think about tomorrow. But I think, let me make it very clear. Yeah. I think it's in our constitution. Mm -hmm. As of now, mm -hmm. the only person who has declared interest for 2022 to be the flag bearer of the Jubilee Party is the deputy president. But as we approach time, the Jubilee Party is ready to accept any other candidate to vie against the, the deputy president in, our, in, the, in the 2022. Just like against me, just like any of all the seats, MCA, member of parliament, women rep, senator, governor, and, and, and the running mate and the presidential candidate, all will be done in accordance with our party constitution. So but there's no favor uh, uh, I think the pre deputy president will enjoy in our party. But there's some history to this. You have been in campaigns yes, where yes. both the president and deputy president were. You've said it, the president has said yes, it, yes. Uh, that they will support the deputy president Absolutely. for 10 years after yes. the whole time is over. Yes. Are you saying that has changed? No, it has not changed. And I'm talking You're as just an, saying it's not I automatic. I am talking as an insider. When we formed government in 2017, the first parliament, and let me, it's mm. good that people say they have been silent, so let me now speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our first parliamentary group, and I'm sure our members of parliament are watching me, mm. they will uh, concur with me. Our first parliamentary group meeting, the president put on the table the, the, the strategic, the way forward for these five years. And he said, when the time comes in 2021, one year to the general election, he will be the campaign manager number one of the deputy president. For now, he says, we have a social contract with the people of Kenya. We must deliver on the manifesto and the, the, the promises we made to them. And also again now, we must deliver on the four key agenda. So those of us, that was in, in, in a parliamentary group meeting, mm -hmm. in private, in private, the president has not once, not twice said he is going to support the deputy president. So all these people who are making noise and saying that uh, the president uh, has changed the tactic, the president doesn't need to go to a political rally or to a television and say, my uh, preferred candidate is uh, the deputy president. I think that is not what the president will do. Okay, but you have just said uh, that it, you're also agreeing that it's not automatic that uh, Deputy President William Ruto gets support. So which is which? You know, I, no, no, I said as far as our party constitution... So what takes precedence? Is it what you, you talked about and, pro and the promises that were made or is it the constitution that takes precedence? No, no, no. no. The president uh, uh, made those... Uh, uh, remarks. Remarks. Mm -hmm. But when the time comes, if there will be, if Honorable Duale as a candidate will uh, be on the ballot, on the nomination process for the Jubilee Party in 2022, he will not be denied an opportunity just because Jubilee top leadership said they preferred William Ruto. So, so it doesn't so, matter. So, yes, um, the, 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 the remarks the, that were made before yes, 2030, before yes, now, yes, do not matter. Do not matter. And of course, okay. uh, the deputy president himself have said, I am ready to be subjected to a free, fair, and transparent party primaries. So our party constitution is the process. But for now, mm -hmm. for now as we are talking, we have, a, we have a roadmap and we have a plan. And our plan is to make sure that uh, uh, based on the, our track record, based on how we deliver on the four uh, pillars of the president and the Jubilee administration, when the time comes, we will present uh, any other candidate and the, or, and the deputy president to the people of Kenya through our party structures. In November 2018, President Kenyatta was quoted uh, in Nyeri as saying, my choice for a successor will shock you. Absolutely. Why would it shock anybody if he had already said he'll support William Ruto? I think uh, uh, that statement is subject to inter interpretation. 
Okay. It's subject to interpretation. How do you interpret it? Uh, how I interpret that uh, you, because he was talking to uh, a particular constituency, and this is a, a Mount Kenya constituency, and he was telling them that you will be shocked from where I sit, that uh, you think uh, I'm not supporting the deputy president, you will mm -hmm. be shocked, he will still be my candidate. That is my interpretation. But of course, those who are, you know, William <laughs> Ruto has, uh, is a serious candidate come 2022. Uh, that's why you cannot discuss the politics of Kenya today without William Ruto. William Ruto has been the headline of the newspapers for the last three months. In fact, he is a newsmaker. Without uh, William Ruto, papers will not sell in our country. So once he is a front runner, he is a man to beat in 2022, then uh, every statement of uh, the president uh, will be interpreted uh, opposite by other forces who feel that uh, 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 the deputy president might not be the uh, candidate, uh, preferred candidate of the president. Okay. But uh, I, can, I can tell you, as an insider, that uh, the Jubilee plan is still on course. <laughs> I am telling okay. you. Okay, I don't know which and one when, to and when, when, uh, just, when, just moments ago you told me those things don't matter anymore, it's a party constitution that will be followed. You're telling me again the Jubilee plan no, is no, on no, course. No, 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 what I'm saying, what I'm telling you is this. We have a candidate, I told you, as of today. Right. The only candidate yes. we have in our party who will be the candidate for 2022 of our party is William Ruto. But we are a very democratic party and we respect our constitution. If tomorrow uh, there are other members from our party who want to contest against the deputy president uh, in the primaries, in the party nominations, they will not be denied that opportunity, I can assure you. All right, let's move on to another issue. I'll come back to all this later. And your tweets and feedback, we'll keep uh, reading them as we uh, go on. Uh, for example, here on Dabutu, for Dabutu, uh, somebody says, Honorable, it's an, uh, Francis Kibai, Honorable Francis Kibai is a nominated MCA in Baringo. He says, Honorable Duale is a strong leader and he knows when to talk and when to keep silent. Jubilee is intact. Silence is a strength. So they, are, they, they also think you are very uh, silent. Hi, Hussein. The cock which came to roost on behalf of Jubilee has since returned home silently. <laughs> the bond that binded Jubilee has since disappeared into thin air. It has become messy, noisy, with more casualties forcing the diehard majority leader to just keep quiet. That is Martin Dare. Uh, in Mombasa, uh, and more and more uh, texts here. What, somebody watching from Masalani County, Masalani in Garissa County says, this is Abdullahi Nur Khalil, Hussein Moshimiyo Duale should not live in denial. There's a storm in the tea of Jubilee, even those who row the vote are closing their eyes before, because it will soon capsize. <laughs> uh, the handshake brought some shifts. I'll come to the issue of handshake shortly. Yes. But still on the tweets and SMSs I'm reading, and what has been uh, in public discourse of the last one week, and I'm sure you've had and opinions to that effect. Uh, one of the recent occurrences which has raised eyebrows is the in government and beyond is the executive order number one of 2019, uh, where the president forms or form the National Development Implementation Communication and Communication Cap Cabinet Committee to be chaired by the Interior Cabinet Secretary, uh, who is Fred Matiangi now to provide supervisory leadership throughout the delivery cycle of all national government programs and projects, among other issues, and says, report directly to the president. You've been around, and I'm sure you've seen numerous uh, articles and opinions around this, in effect saying this sidelines the deputy president. How do you respond to this? Well, sir, and this is why I want to make it very, very clear that uh, that's a pedestrian argument. The deputy president under the new constitution, 2010, mm. falls within what we call the presidency. Okay. So the moment you say in the executive order, we'll report to the presidency. To the president. The, no, to the, it's the president. The uh, presidency, uh, um. the presidency entails both the president and the deputy president. And that's why even today, mm. you will have no accounting officer, unlike before, when we had a vice president, we were in charge of a ministry with a permanent secretary. Under the new constitution and under a presidential system of government, we have the presidency. So the president and the deputy president are tied together. And number two, there is a difference between the function of a cabinet secretary and that of the deputy president, mm -hmm. even in the constitution. Mm -hmm. The functions of the deputy president is well found in Article 147. 
The function of a cabinet secretary is found in Article 152. There is nothing in between. Okay? There's nothing in between. So there's no way. One, again, the deputy president is an elective position. The one of a cabinet secretary is a pointive position. So if you look at the constitution, there is no way at any any time that uh, the function of a cabinet secretary will overlap to another institution. Make it very more clear for you. Even today, we cannot form, create the office of a chief minister. Unless, you cannot create? Yes, unless we amend the constitution. Okay. Unless we amend the constitution. Because in the current setup, it says the cabinet will be composed of the president, the deputy president, the attorney general, and either 14 14 or 22 uh, members of the cabinet. Okay. What would you describe the role of Matiangi then? No, I think... What, what is he now? No, no, look at even the title of that ministry. Minister for Interior and Coordination of National Government. Right. Why? The Minister for Interior and Coordination of National Government enjoys a certain specific governance structures that no any other minister enjoys. The whole, of, the whole line of the provincial administration. He's the only minister who can get a report from the sub-location. Because there's an assistant chief, there's a chief, there's a deal. So in that sense, because the whole essence of this uh, uh, cabinet group was to monitor and evaluate the national government projects. So that the assistant chief, the county commissioner, the county, uh, uh, the deal can report and say, this project has stalled. This project through, is going. Through the Interior Cabinet Secretary? Through the Interior Secretary? To the President. And then to the Presidency, <laughs> which again, uh, uh, both the, okay. uh, the, the President and the, and the Deputy will be. So what you, what you see out there, uh, let me tell you uh, uh, from where I sit, is just uh, people, uh, who, uh, others have pedestrian argument, others who feel, you know the problem in this country is that uh, there are people uh, uh, who, who, who drink in the morning William Ruto, lunchtime William Ruto. They, they have no life outside William Ruto. So anything that is said, uh, they link it to William Ruto. But I can tell you for okay. now, is they, that, uh, that's very, very... Uh, in many quarters, they have said, I mean, you cannot, you cannot argue with this legally. What has been, I mean, you're right, what, has been, what is being talked about is, no, 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 is no. more political. The interpretation is political. But let me just ask you... You know the, let function, me, let me, you know the function of an executive order, the function of an executive order basically, is to show the, how departments are placed in various ministries and various uh, uh, government agencies. Okay, now that's, that, that's exactly. now that you say that, yeah. now that we have in the composition, the chairperson is the cabinet secretary interior, vice chair is the cabinet secretary national treasury and planning, members are all cabinet secretaries, the attorney general head of public service, reporting obligations is to his excellency, the president is not the presidency, it's been written clearly, it's his excellency, the president. Um, the president is the is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a institution where the deputy president sits. Okay, the same constitution also talks about the cabinet. Yes. Being inclusive of the president and deputy president. Yes. Okay, so when they say uh, cabinet secretaries, all of them, everybody reports to the cabinet secretary interior, who now reports to the president. What Let does me that tell mean? You, where that, does that, that leave? That, that is not a cabinet meeting. The only person who can chair a cabinet meeting is the president. It's not a cabinet meeting, of course. Yes. It's a committee. So this is just a committee, and a very nice committee. Even today, the deputy president was chairing the IBEC uh, meeting that brings together minister for devolution, minister for, for finance, all governors, uh, parliament, senate. So there are many committees. Okay. I mean, does this mean the deputy president has been castigated in some quarters, as you know that, for campaigning early for 2022? and some of his allies as well. And they've always said what they are doing is moving around the country to champion the government's agenda, appraising, Kenyan, appraising Kenyans on progress and launching development projects. Uh, he actually is a self-proclaimed Mutuam Kono of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Not so, not, let, not, let, not, not, not uh, so let me just, self-proclaimed. Okay. He is a principal assistant that's to the he president. That's what he said. He said he's a Kono. That's fine. Yeah, uh, that, 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 I mean, in, in Swahili, that's it. Uh, yeah, basically, you, you, can, you can lose it and say to that. But my, 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 my issue was, or my question is, mm -hmm. about campaigning early for 2022 and the justification that has been used that we've been going out around the country, apprising people about development projects and telling people where we are with them and launching development projects. Does this mean now then, 
that he has to check with this committee, whose the chair is Matiangi, before doing what he does in that respect? Number one, I don't speak for the deputy president, neither do I speak for cabinet. I mean, I, 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 I lead the legislature. But uh, you watch this space, you'll find the deputy president as a principal assistant to the president. Today, if he goes to my constituency, he will uh, find and he'll be briefed even before he leaves. Even before he leaves Nairobi, he will be briefed by various cabinet ministers that these are the projects in that constituency. And I think now it'll be even better if that committee of the cabinet can give him one synchronized document and say, Your Excellency, you are going to Wajia West or you are going to Garissa Township. These are the, what the Minister of Energy is doing. This is what the Minister of, Minister of Transport is doing. Mm -hmm. This is what the Minister of Health is doing. So this is all about coordination. You had a meeting last week uh, in Mombasa with the President. And you had the stories that were reported yes. in the media that yes. it was stormy. Yes. And there was some tongue lashing yes. from the President to you yes. and the rest. Uh, Tell us how it was first, plus an idea of a parliament secretary. That was, well, that was, that was, uh, it was reported that it was, that idea was floated. That is why... Which more or less is what you do as a majority leader. <laughs> you know... To have uh, somebody else do, know, acting in that, you, in that respect, yeah. Uh, it's only a member of parliament who can become the leader of majority. Because the function of the leader of majority must be transacted within the chamber. And if you are not a member of parliament, then you cease uh, to be uh, 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 admitted, uh, or you cease, uh, you will not be admitted to the chamber. But because, you know, when we had that meeting, it was a very, very uh, good meeting, mm -hmm. and we decided not to make it public, because that was an annual uh, leadership of both houses meeting, which we do every year to set the legislative agenda for 2019. So you wait, I mean, uh, wait for the secretary. Uh, wait for what happened, I think. Was this idea floated there? No, you know, that's what I'm telling you. Was it there? That's why I'm telling you, yeah. you, uh, you, the media needs to get facts and figures. So this was not floated at all? I mean, it was not there. It was not there. In fact, uh, our officers were strengthening more. You know, the leader of majority's office, the only office that deals with the leader of majority in the executive is the office of the attorney general. Because the leader of majority deals with, one, all the bills that emanate from the cabinet. And they are uh, transmitted to my office by a letter with the cabinet memo by the attorney general. Secondly, the other minister who deals with my office is the minister for national treasury. Uh, when we begin the budget circle, maybe in February, so that every day the budget policy statement, the budget, uh, the taxation levels, so all these ministers deal with my office. And that I, is don't, I don't mind, in fact, uh, if uh, a secretary is created for me in the office of the attorney, uh, attorney general, who will uh, make uh, the transmission of bills faster. <laughs> but it was also discussed anyway. You know, that's why I tell okay. you, uh, that's why I tell you, 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 you don't uh, uh, respond to pedestrian uh, arguments because, uh, you know, you only respond to what was discussed there. Right, I mean, you have the advantage of having been there. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what was reported from sources. And I think, uh, sources, and I think, and I think we were many. <laughs> we were the, the, yeah. the two speakers, the two deputy speakers, uh, five members of the leadership from both houses, so the deputy president and the president. So we were about 20 people. You don't trust the media all the time, do you? No, no, I, 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 no, 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 I, I cherish the media, but the media must be responsible and must be factual. <laughs> because, you know, you, you, you inform the country. So you must inform the country factually. Mwadiki Joshua says on Twitter, it seems Honorable Duale is in planet Pluto politically. Jubilee died on 9th March. It's not Mwadiki Joshua only who holds this view. Some members of your party hold the same view and have blamed the discontent in the Jubilee party on the handshake and the specifically the presence of uh, uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga. Do you think it has had any negative effect I don't on think the Jubilee so. Party? In fact, the handshake uh, has made uh, and given uh, the Jubilee Party uh, a platform to deliver on its platform, on its uh, manifesto and on the four big agenda. 
because uh, for the first time, mm -hmm. our engagement with the former prime minister, from where I sit, is uh, to agree and to uh, 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 agree on issues of national importance. For example, corruption, fighting ethnicity. Honorable Raila Odinga is still a member of ODM. Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta is still our party leader. So we have agreed the handshake was for the unity of the country, mm -hmm. was uh, to form a joint position, both the opposition and government, in the house, outside the house, to make sure that uh, we change the narrative, we change the politics of our country, that never again will Kenyans uh, you know, go to elections based on uh, ethnic emotions, that we go to elections based on issues. And each and every one of us can go to any part of the country. But what has happened is that uh, uh, from both sides of the political divide, those who are in ODM uh, feel that... Who actually uh, say uh, uh, the deputy president is anti Yes, Hanshi, yes, they that, uh, yeah. those because they have got uh, historical issues with the deputy president. Uh, they feel that, uh, no, uh, let us uh, uh, reduce his handshake to be between uh, the former prime minister and the president. There are those in Jubilee who have uh, the feeling that uh, this handshake is isolating the, the deputy, deputy president. president. What all, do you feel? All, all these, from where I sit and from where even the deputy president sits, we are seeing the handshake uh, as... Uh, uh, we're seeing the handshake as something which has made uh, us, uh, the Jubilee party, deliver on our manifesto, deliver on the four key agenda, mm -hmm. and the handshake, in fact, uh, resonates very well with the principles of the Jubilee Party. The Jubilee Party was, uh, was formed to make sure that uh, we kill ethnic politics, we create uh, a national platform, uh, we, we create unity of purpose among the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. That was the essence and the principle of Jubilee Party. And the coming of Honorable Raila Odinga was again to make sure that, yes, Do you think yes we, might, we might have, we might have uh, uh, ideological differences. Right. Uh, based on our parties, but when it comes to the people of Kenya, to the unit of the people of Kenya, to the war against corruption, to, uh, to delivery of uh, the four big uh, uh, projects of the president and the Jubilee administration, we can ha have one narrative. Has it unified the country Absolutely. from where you stand, the handshake? From where I stand, uh, yes and no. Why because there are, people who believe from, there are people who believe, yes, temperatures have come down, the country is very stable. The, uh, the, the business community, if you ask them, they're very, very happy. At the same time, if you uh, go to some parts of the country, uh, there are those who feel that, uh, yes, uh, there are those within the opposition who wants to undermine uh, the deputy president. But uh, from where I sit, I think the deputy president uh, is a serious political uh, candidate. He has... Uh, in my opinion, he's the only horse around. And uh, as we approach 2022, he must be ready uh, to face uh, a lot of uh, hurdles on the way. Okay. It's common mm -hmm. for, any, for any serious presidential candidate. I mean, that's why the rest, uh, nobody is bothered about them. The whole focus is on William Ruto. But you say and those had, of us yeah. and, and those of us uh, who work with William Ruto, mm. uh, we expected this, so we are, we are not shocked. But you say the handshake, uh is not entirely uniting the country. That's what you're saying. No, what I'm saying, because you know, I have to speak. Uh, you said yes and no. Yes, yeah. uh, I say the business community is happy. The country is stable. Uh, Why are you not happy? No, 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 I'm, 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 you, you asked me what is you, the what you is said the said I asked you whether the handshake is unifying the country. You said yes and no, so it's, why no? So I am giving you yes. Let me first give you yes and I'm coming to no. <laughs> okay. Yes, if you talk to the business community, if you talk to even people like me, they work even in parliament. We have now more synergy with the minority leadership. There are a number of times where we can agree on a matter of national importance. So there's unity of purpose. But when you listen to other political uh, players, players mm -hmm. if you listen to ODM, mm -hmm. uh, who say now who are chasing their members of parliament from their party, they say, you know, the deputy president is using the calmness the stability mm -hmm. that the handshake brought mm -hmm. to undermine our party. Mm -hmm. Then there are those who are in Jubilee uh, who view that uh, the handshake uh, uh, has created uh, a narrative in where the deputy president 
is being undermined. Right. So I think the intent and purpose of the handshake uh, from the president was a very good idea. But of course, uh, different political entities uh, define it differently. <laughs> Yes. Okay, still it's yes and no for you. But I mean, you, you keep saying that th there are players who think it's between the president and, and, and the opposition leader, Raila Odinga. They've said it's about the country. But the president himself said the people who really understand this handshake and what it's really about, it's o him and Odinga. He said that of on course, record. Of course, because they're the ones who created the, the handshake. They you know the handshake better after the president means that he's the one who had one-to-one -one with Honorable Raila Odinga. Right. So nobody understands better the genesis of the handshake than the president. After that this, is basically what he says. After what this means. handshake, I mean, months after that, I had an interview with uh, your, your uh, uh, colleague from the Senate, Majority Leader uh, Kipchumba Murkomen, who then said that there are powerful voices in the pres powerful people in the presidency fighting the deputy president. And this has been said for a while. Do you agree with that? That's, Have you heard about that? Do that, you? That is pedestrian and that is reckless. There's no such thing. That's no, what no, 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 no. I mean, people of our caliber, being the leader of majority either in the Senate or in the National Assembly, at all times, we must speak with a voice that is in tandem with that of our party leader. Never, uh, never will I uh, contradict the position of the president or the deputy president. Even where I disagree with them, I will support them in public, but raise my concerns when I'm with them individually. That is, uh, that is why uh, the people of Kenya are asking, where is Duale? I mean, I am not the type of a person, and the position I hold in the Jubilee administration and in parliament is not a position that uh, I can say this today, which I cannot substantiate. I, I listen to that. Uh, and you know, we have forums uh, as leaders with the executive, with the president. We quietly meet the president. If uh, the, uh, the leader, uh, my counterpart, had uh, uh, concrete evidence that there are people who are undermining the deputy president and who are working in Jubilee, mm. then uh, we have forums where we can raise that. So in my opinion, that was uh, reckless. There have been... Uh calls for a referendum to change the structure of government. They've been gaining momentum. Uh, different stakeholders giving their views to the uh, Building Bridges uh, initiative. I want to know what your view is on this and have you given any position yourself or the Jubilee Party or what is your position? We have not given our position as our party and, uh, of, of, uh, of as of now. But uh, you know, for me to discuss whether there will be a referendum or not, then structures are, changing the no, structure of government. And, and number the one, side, yeah. number one, there must be the questions. So there are no questions. So if in the absence of referendum questions to be put to the people of Kenya, mm. then whether we will have referendum or not is neither here or not there. Number two, whether we want to have a referendum uh, as a party. It's a decision that will be made by the top organ of our party, the, uh, the National Governing Council, chaired by the president, who is our party leader. Number three, I have read the nine points of the Building Bridges Initiative Committee. Mm -hmm. They are yet to come to my county. When they come to Garissa, then make sure you send a, a, a crew, a media crew from your station. I'll give my, my opinion. But uh, for now, the, uh, in the absence of a referendum questions, in the absence of uh, the party uh, making a decision, uh, we have not submitted anything. But let me give you my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. If the people of Kenya decide that uh, we move from a presidential system of government to a parliamentary system of government, I have absolutely no problem with that. In fact, a parliamentary system of government where the prime minister will be chosen by the largest party or coalition of parties will uh, give me Adam Duale an opportunity to be the prime minister one day. 
Mm -hmm. You know, so you compared, that. compared to the presidential system, okay. which is uh, more of a dominance mm -hmm. by the big uh, tribes, mm -hmm. the big five tribes. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, my party has not uh, presented its position on a referendum. Our party leader has not spoken on the position of a referendum. But as a politician, I am saying, bring the questions. And unlike before, and this I need to make it very clear, Unlike before, everybody, every region, every party, every uh, corner of the country, they will have their own referendum questions. So how to merge those questions and, 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 and get a uniformity set of questions will be a very, very difficult and it will be a tall order. But uh, those who want a referendum, we are telling them, uh, fine, uh, the, the provision in the constitution provides you for that. But, uh, because you have asked me a question, I think I need to make it very, very clear that it's very unfortunate that today, as of today, we have not enacted a referendum law in our country. Mm -hmm. So even how to conduct a referendum, the uh, processes are not anchored in law. So I think uh, when we open parliament, I think it is uh, important that uh, uh, we first uh, develop and uh, create a legislation uh, that will help us conduct a referendum. Okay. You're telling me, th though, that you're supporting, a you'd love to see a parliamentary system. You've asked me a question. Our party has not decided on yes, the position of the referendum. That's your, your the the, the bridging, uh, Building Bridges Initiative, to uh, my knowledge, they have no brief on to tell us uh, whether we will have... Uh, uh, governance mm -hmm. structure review. Mm -hmm. um, and I told you... Uh, One of the key players yes. in, the, in, in what and, uh, the but, uh, Bridges but, uh, initiative was born out of but, the country. Uh, but I can tell you, if you, if you ask me, yeah. I have absolutely no problem with uh, uh, a presidential uh, system of government. But, but mm -hmm. if you ask me individually, I'll prefer uh, and support a parliamentary system of government for one good reason. Apart from the one that Honorable Duale uh, my party or coalition of my party might see the strength of my uh, personality mm -hmm. and present me uh, to parliament for the position of a prime minister. But if we want to reduce the tension that we always get and the ethnic mobilization that you see during elections, that is synonymous with a presidential system of government. The moment you take the contest to constituencies, that whoever wants to become the CEO of the country must win in as many constituencies, as many members of parliament as possible, mm. then uh, that, 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 that will reduce this every five years we go to, uh, to the brink of a civil war. Many people die. So if you want to reduce that, yeah. if you want to reduce the, the contest, then parliamentary system of Meaning government. you're elected in parliament. But yes. Okay. But well, I mean, at the end some, of the day- There are some who think that is also prone to abuse the highest bidder in parliament? Not even the highest bidder. In fact, it will create the most... It's good me I give the pros and the cons. Mm -hmm. it, a parliamentary system of government will create a very unstable government. Because members of parliament, as you know today, uh, can replace a prime minister every six months. Okay. Again, secondly, I think it's also important for the citizens um, uh, to choose their CEO, a present system of government. But uh, let's wait uh, for those who want to bring a referendum. From where I sit now, our focus as a party, under the instruction of the president, is to put our energy and resources and time for the achievement of the phobic and the manifesto. OK, I have about two or three more questions left. Let's take a look at, uh, I have more. Yes. Only because of time. Yes. But uh, let's take a look at what you're saying. A feedback again, a sample. We'll start with what you're saying. This is on Twitter, Katebe Saddam Kibet. Mishima Duale should not live in denial. There's a storm in the sea of Jubilee. Even those who roll the boat are closing their eyes because it will soon capsize. I think I read this earlier. The handshake brought some shifts. People still think this is a problem that came out of the handshake. Honorable Kip Kemoy, Chumba, Nicholas. Jubilee Party is dead. And it should not resurrect if people who are expected to resurrect it are the likes of Honorable. Limo Chapakazi, Senator Aaron Chirio, together with Tangatanga team. Forget about it. 
Which team are you in, by the way? Is yes, I mean, okay, I'll come to that. There are some who talk about those teams, Jubilee MPs included. Ben Kisembe, surely the Jubilee Party top brass needs to uncover the pretense mask and restore the confidence Kenyans had before. Political blame games should end. Still on Twitter, we have uh, Abdinur Ali. Kindly ask Mishima Duale his take on the cancellation of exams in some schools in northern Kenya. Secondly, his take on the new proposal of revenue sharing by the CRA. Okay. Uh, Edwin Karanja, Honorable Duale, this is unlike you. Speak and tell us what is cooking in that pot. <laughs> okay, I don't know which one you want to take first. But, no, no, um, I think, uh, of course, uh, I said uh, uh, because of my position, don't expect me to tell you what is cooking in the pot. Okay. And number two, uh, I, uh, you asked me in which camp. Yeah. Those are a those are, uh, uh, creation of the social media. And uh, uh, being, being the leader of majority, the 349 members of parliament are my colleagues, the 172 members of the Jubilee, I am their leader. So I don't uh, run the party from a corner. I run the party from the middle. And uh, the middle is the Jubilee party. All right, still in Mombasa, there's uh, tweets and SMSs coming, and somebody here says, if you say the media misinformed the public about the Mombasa meeting, let him state the facts. Uh, because they're talking about the legislative agenda. Okay, what is your fine. legislative agenda? Yes. Uh, for, for, for this year? We have agreed. Uh, we had a number of 10 bills, government bills, which have stuck in, in the Senate. So we have found a way. And the Senate colleagues have uh, confirmed to us that uh, in the first two weeks of the uh, opening of Parliament, they will expose that. We have also agreed on how to deal with the matter of the budget making process, mm -hmm. which is beginning uh, by, by me tabling the budget policy statement. We have uh, agreed on uh, how the two houses, uh, the leadership and the speakers, will have uh, a constant engagement okay. on agreeing a number of bills. They're we have agreed that the leadership will meet the president uh, every uh, every month once. There were no disagreements. No, no, there were no absolutely no disagreements, and that's why there after, no after we finished the meeting, we went for our lunch. After the lunch, we went concerns to concerns or not raised in no. the way the leadership uh, of Jubilee in the National Assembly, the Senate, has been conducted. No, 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 no. What we have also raised in that meeting is that going forward, uh, as leadership. We will always read the same. We'll always read from the same script as the party leader and the deputy party leader. All right. The and of course, even our, our party secretary general was there and the chairman. We have also agreed that going forward, we will create a, a link between the legislature and the party. And also, we have agreed in principle that uh, again we will instill discipline among our members okay. in as far as the, the are utterances were concerned. Time will tell what exactly happened there. Yes. Uh, some Jubilee MPs have criticized the Secretary General for allegedly making a unilateral decision on the Bekasi by-election that Jubilee is not going to be involved. We saw one of your members, Moses Kuria, saying he'll support, I think that's the Wiper MP if I'm not wrong. Uh, I mean, is this first, did this, the Wiper candidate, yeah? Did this issue first, um, feature in Mombasa, and number two, what is the position of Jubilee no, in this? It, it didn't feature, and uh, uh, the position is one, we are not uh, having a candidate in Mbakasi. At all? At all. So is, two, the, is the position also that Jub no Jubilee member should support any member? No, and or? then uh, if Jubilee again as a party will decide which side of the other parties they will support, support yeah. then uh, you'll see the Secretary General and you'll see me in that press conference. Moses Kuria and the company do not represent the position of our party. Of course, uh, you know, Hussein, even you, the media, you must make a difference between who, when he speaks, the party position is known. So when Moses Kuria speaks, that's not Jubilee which is speaking. That's an individual member of Jubilee who is speaking. But when I speak... And he has every right within your party ranks to do yes, what he wants to. No, yeah, he can. he can support. Yes, and that's why... But, he, but Okay. That's, that's why we have no problem. That's why you see Honorable Alfred Kiteri speaking, you see Honorable Mos Kuria speaking. The only time we have a problem is if they use their position as our members of parliament to make uh, unfair comments on our party leadership. 
Okay. Uh, Hudeifa in Nairobi, <laughs> he says, do you regret dissolving the URP party? And he goes ahead to say this, I don't know why he thinks this, that you are now partyless. So do you regret resolving, he's saying you are now partyless, do you regret resolving the URP party? You know, uh, uh, and that's why I say uh, we are not pedestrian. We had a very, very good reason why we dissolved not only URP and TNA, but other 12 parties. And we have seen the fruits of that dissolution. Today, we have the largest number of members of parliament in both houses and in the counties never seen in the history of Kenya. It was only seen during the Kanu, the Kanu era. 170 members of parliament, over 35 senators, uh, over 32 uh, governors. If you were in our respective uh, cocoons, uh -huh. And you know, that is why the president and the deputy president, but that's why the genesis of the handshake goes back to the formation of the Jubilee Party. We were ahead of uh, Raila Odinga okay. in making sure we started with the, the Kalanjus and the, and, the, and the Kikuyus coming together. All right. we, we, once we did that, we brought peace among, uh, by, by dissolving 14 parties. That's why you see, compare our party leadership in the House. You have me, my deputy is a Kisi, our whip is a Luya. Uh, our deputy is from uh, Mbere, go to the other uh, contact, uh, parties. They come from one region. They come from one tribe. Like which party? ODM. Okay, just explain there. Yes, uh, Honorable, Honorable Bandi is from uh, Homabe. Mm -hmm. Honorable Junet mm -hmm. is from uh, Migori. Uh, you look at it. Okay. Uh, you Wait, go to Waipa, you find uh, the position given to Waipa. The position given to Waipa of the deputy to Bandi is from Kambani. Go to the Senate, Honorable James Orengo. On okay. the like on, you, I mean, but, in, but they in, come from different regions. No, but, in our, different but, in, our, in, but, but in, our, in our national assembly leadership, you will not see somebody from the president's tribe, somebody from the president's community or the deputy president's community. Well, and that tells you the Senate is from. But I mean, this is not, not here nor there. No, 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 it's, no, it's no, 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 anyway. it's not. <laughs> it's not. That is, that is how it is. It is, the, it is the face of our party and the face of the country. Okay. Uh, from what I've seen, it's balanced in, all, in, all, in <laughs> most of the parties. Of course, Jubilee is different uh, from, uh, from the rest in terms yes, of so balancing. Sorry. But we've seen ethnic balancing in, yes. all, the, in, all, in all the other parties. Very to, briefly, I have one more question. I'll save this for the last. This is from Honorable Junaid Mohammed. Yes. It's a very interesting one. I'll, I'll yes. do this in the end. Uh, he's just texted. But there's, uh, there are more tweets here, uh, texts here that I'd like you to respond to very briefly, just for the sake of your yes. constituents. You've yes. had the questions. One is Abdi from... Uh, uh, who says, first who says, please ask Honorable Duale from Alindi yes. about his take on mass cancellation of KCSC results of students from Northern Kenya. There's been, there's been a question also about uh, the issue uh, of hijabs and what happened in the courts. I think uh, I, I was very categorical on the matter of hijab. When it comes to our faith and how we practice, it's found in Article 32, sub Article 3 of the Constitution. Nobody can deny you. Okay. No institution, uh, no uh, agency can deny you how you profess or you worship your religion. So the Supreme Court, in my opinion, I respect their judgment. They mm -hmm. were out of order. And I was in Garissa. I have told the Muslim community to defy. When it comes... Despite that they are talking about no, no, when schools, it when uh, it comes to Catholic schools, yeah? Yes, when it comes to a matter... That's why the Constitution says... Nobody will be discriminated by any institution, whether it's a school, whether it's a hospital, whether it is a mall. So I will say it. It doesn't matter that. I will say it openly. Okay. When it mm -hmm. comes to our religion, how we worship, and, 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 and Islam is a, is a very structured religion, we will not listen to anybody, whether it is a Supreme Court, whether it is. You just said you abide by the law we and rules and institutions of this country, the, right? The, the teachings of the Quran and the prophetic traditions supersede the constitution of Kenya. All right, that is a... For me, for me and all Muslims, that, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, what I'm trying to say is, the bare minimums for a Muslim, the bare minimums that he must believe in and he must practice is provided in the Quran and the teachings you're telling the them prophet. to ignore this that's what you're no, saying no 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 i have i'm okay. telling them ignore it with the content it deserves the issue of and, 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 and let me come to this eh? let me come to this the chief justice david maraga is a man who is very diligent he is a man of god and he believes 
And even the sect he believes in Christianity, the Seventh-day Adventist, he's on record saying that I don't work on Saturdays because it's a day of worship for, for seven days, Seventh-day Adventist. He cannot purport to micromanage on how our girls, our sisters, our mothers, our daughters dress as provided for in Islamic religion. That's number one. Number two, on the matter on uh, consolation, consolation, I think that happened in 2013 in my constituency. And you remember it also. By this time, there is a serious mass cancellation in northern Kenya. We are going to court. We have filed the case today. We are asking the Ministry of Education to form a tax force and investigate why 80% of the cancellation that was done to, to, to the mm. last year's examination, mm. they come from one region. Okay. I mean, it can't, it can't happen. Finally, Northeastern Kenya has been accused of producing fake census results in the last census. You had this uh, uh, uproar a while back, thereby benefiting from unfair or undeserved resource allocation. You had this from and Central Kenya MPs uh, crying foul of being shortchanged. Your comments? No, you know, uh, uh, there are those uh, people in government and uh, in our country who still uh, believe that Kenya is the Kenya of 1963. We want the census to be conducted in a free, fair, transparent way. We have asked our people, more than ever before, even the pastoralists, mm. to come out in large numbers and register. But we will not allow any agency, including the National uh, Registration, uh, Kenya National uh, Bureau of Statistics, to play monkey games when it comes to northern Kenya. Okay. The text here, finally, from uh, Honorable Junaid Mohammed is uh, Hussein, we have taken note that the majority leader has not spoken in bad light about Honorable Raila Odinga, and the show is almost ending. Kindly tell Kenyans. That? <laughs> uh, I think he's being sarcastic, but this is the point. He's no, saying, no, you know. He's saying, let, let me just let me read that text again. He said, Hussein, we have taken note that the majority leader has not spoken in bad light about Honorable Raila Odinga and the show is ending, almost ending. Kindly tell Kenyans. No, you know, I'm, he's shocked. In you other know, words, you know, I am not. Uh, I don't play in the league of uh, uh, Joho, Junet, and the like. Who, at every opportunity they they get, they will insult the deputy president. We uh, we respect the former prime minister. At one time, he was our leader, myself, and the deputy president. Uh, we are happy now he has uh, uh, joined us in building a more united uh, country. We support the president and uh, we will not uh, contradict the president. I can assure you myself, uh, the president's position is that uh, we work and support uh, the former prime minister in building a more united, cohesive nation. All right. And uh, you know, I told you, uh, I'm very loyal, so I'm loyal to my bosses. And uh, every morning uh, before I make a comment, even to a media guy who, who texts me, I, 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 first check with I, him. I first check with them. So Honorable Junet and, uh, you know, I saw Honorable uh, Governor of Mombasa saying, I will not wait for William Ruto in the, in the airstrip. Uh, and, uh, but I want to tell him that William Ruto will come to Mombasa, he will go to all the airstrips, and he doesn't require your presence. We don't require your presence. But... Uh, the likes of, you know, Honorable Joho and others, if they want to vie for the presidency, let them go and endure themselves to the people of Kenya. You know, their presidency is, uh, looks like, their candidature looks like a candidate that is focused on one individual, William Ruto. And as they uh, do that, uh, they help us uh, build our candidate. There's a lot more to talk about in the coming days. We hope to talk to you again, Honorable Duale. I mean, it's... Um... No, I will uh, I'll go back uh, to silence. And, unless, we'll silence. Unless, I have, uh, something, <laughs> unless I have something to inform the, the country, I will not uh, go and yap, yap outside there. All right, there's a lady, Julia, says, I love this man, Duale. More of tweets and SMSs keep sending them. Uh, Elikana Andenga says, Honorable Duale, is he in Tanga Tanga team or Handshake team? You said those teams don't, uh, don't uh, exist. Although we've seen some MPs no, no. talking about those teams as existing. Um, no, no, no. Let me tell you. Eh? Why should I be a member of a team? I mean, I can create my own team. And the team that I belong to is the team of Uru Kinyata and William Ruto. Okay. And uh, if they want to know my position in 2022, my candidate, uh, and that of many of us in Jubilee, including the president, is the candidate of uh, 
William Ruto uh, <laughs> and, and will present him to the party nomination. All right. That's our constitution. More feedback. You've got to give it to Honorable Duale. He knows when to speak and what to say. He's a seasoned politician who understands the importance of strategic communication. That is Asmali on Twitter. And finally, Abdi from Garissa Township. Meshimiwa, what position are you planning to vie for in 2022? I don't know if you, don't want to, if you want to answer that. No, I mean, uh, uh, I will answer that question uh, when the time comes. For now, uh, I am, I am, I am uh, very, very happy. And I want to thank the people of Garita Township who elected me three times in three different political parties. Right. So it's... when the time comes, uh, I will tell them whether I'll quit, whether I'll look for another seat. But for now, I want to work for the great people of Garita Township. It's great to have you uh, in studio tonight. Uh, thank you so much for making time for us, Honorable Adan Duale. Thank you, sir. Uh, a lot, of course, a lot more will be clearer as time comes. Uh, keep talking to us, double two four, uh, double two is our SMS number. Uh, on Twitter, use the hashtag Newsnight.